At Adepticon 2023, Games Workshop announced that Warhammer 40,000 10th edition is imminent, set to release in the Northern Hemisphere summer. Nobody was exactly surprised at the news from what I can tell because apparently it's time for a new edition based on Game Workshop's established pattern of sort of a new edition every three years. That seems like a short life cycle to me, coming from software, but it's 2023 and I guess things move pretty fast. My impression is that most people are pleased at the news, not because it's a new edition necessarily, but because it's been explicitly stated that it's a simplified edition, but not simple. It seems that a lot of Warhammer enthusiasts think recent versions have become over-complex, poorly organized, and generally unwieldy games. I agree, and I'm looking forward to 10th edition, and here's why. Good design is succinct. I have a good number of Citadel miniatures. I enjoy painting them while listening to books from Black Library or watching Warhammer TV. I'm a gamer, and yet I haven't actually ever played Warhammer 40,000. In fact, many Warhammer enthusiasts play Wargame Rules from Wargame Vault or uh, the inappropriately titled One Page Rules. I was underwhelmed by One Page Rules personally, but I do play other systems like Rain in Hell with the Oculus Spirit expansion, Space Station Zero, Mecha Force, and others. I did read the 40 K 9th edition rules after acquiring some space marines, and after reading them I simply declined to engage. The, the rules weren't just complex, they were, in my opinion at least, clumsily complex. It's 2023 and we humans have been gaming a long time and we've been describing how to play a specific set of rules for just as long. At this point in game development, even a complex game ought to be advanced enough to condense a complex feeling experience into minimal game maintenance. Lots of rules get written to produce a specific feeling in a game, because the rules writer wasn't able to produce that feeling in just one rule. It's one of those unobtainable ideals, like trying to write the perfectly short sentence. At the most extreme, you'd be able to encapsulate everything you wanted to say in a single word. But then you've just offloaded all of your intent to knowledge your audience must either know or look up, and eventually you've built up an impossibly unwieldy vocabulary. But I do believe it's possible to provide the feel of a frantic, intense military campaign with uh, some number of rules fewer than those in 9th edition. Phases and triggers. A simple and early warning sign for me in these kinds of games are the phases of a turn. In 9th edition, there are seven phases to each turn. This isn't quite as bad as something like, say, Magic the Gathering, which not only has some unknown number of turn phases. I don't know what how they classify it lately. But the, the main phase occurs more than once during your turn. There's no mnemonic to help you remember what each phase is, and each phase predictably has sub-steps all its own. And sure, not all phases apply to all armies. An army without psychers can skip the psyker phase, for instance. No matter what, though, seven phases is just too much. By round three of a game, your brain's processed a minimum of 42 potential event triggers. That's seven phases across three turns for two players. 42. Even if you did ultimately skip some of them, that's the minimum. Probably you didn't choose to do nothing during your turn, so actually you've processed a lot more than that. The thing about rules is that you have to cycle through each one in order to determine whether it applies to the current state of the game, and you have to do that every time the game state changes, and the game state is always changing. On top of the standard loop of player turns, there are also rules for armies and units, and you can't choose to forget a rule only to remember it when it happens to get triggered. You have to remember a rule even when it's not triggered, because when and if it does get triggered, you must know that the trigger exists and has a rule associated with it. In theory, you only have to remember the half that apply to your own army. In reality, though, it's a strategic advantage it's part of the game, for you to understand your opponent's triggers too, so you can change your behavior to avoid providing accidental benefits to enemy troops. Functionally, that means you have to know the rules 
for your army all of the time, and worse yet, you have to temporarily learn many of the rules of your opponent's army as you play the game every time you play against an unfamiliar faction or army. Data sheets with actual data. Game rules are persistent. They're relevant through the entire game, and when there are lots of them, it only makes sense to make them easy to reference. 10th edition promises to have data sheets that contain useful data, providing players with not just the stats of their faction, but also the rules unique to that faction. It's on a page, you can print it out, put it on a mobile device, refer to it as you play. They'll come on cards, they'll come in books, they'll be everywhere. It's simple and probably in retrospect really obvious. I think it's going to be a huge improvement. It's certainly enough to make me want to play the game. Better yet, the rules are zero dollars. For 9th edition, the core rules are also zero dollars. You can download them from the Warhammer site, but the rules for each army type are sold in codexes that you buy, presumably along with the army of miniatures you're building. For 10th edition, though, the codexes are going to be zero dollars. You buy some miniatures, you build an army, download the data sheet, and you go play. Definitely enough to make me want to play the game. Easy rules are easy excuses. I fit into that subset of gamers who sincerely enjoy rules. Game rules are a form of code, specifically an algorithm, and observing how one situation is affected by a rule differently than another situation is one way I explore a game world. It's surprising and fun when you notice that this space marine is within one inch of that space marine, so this one gets a bonus of to his ballistics skill, and it's terrifying when this alien gets to move farther than it could at the start of the game because now it's on a type of terrain that it prefers, and so on. I really like rules, it's part of the fun for me, but I like beautiful rules more than clunky rules. I'd probably buy more miniatures and more books were the rules not actively discouraging me from doing so. I'm interested in a bunch of different miniatures, but I'm not buying a whole army to not play the game they're intended for. Why would I collect a box of Adeptus Sororitas when the rules to use them costs extra money, and, and those rules are clunky and require me to memorize seemingly arbitrary turn phases and add a bunch of paperwork at the table? On the other hand, I enjoy playing the Warhammer, Quest Blackstone Fortress board game, I felt confident buying it because I knew I enjoyed all the things in the box. The miniatures, the lore, the genre, and the rules. If I see one of the expansions for it, I'll probably buy that too. And I intend to try some of the other games, like Boarding Actions and Necromunda. I want to try all of these because I've seen them played and I like what I see. I started out in the Warhammer setting through its lore. I've found that I enjoy Citadel miniatures and I enjoy painting them a lot more than I enjoy painting the cheap little D&D &D miniatures I've had access to previously. I'm actively looking for an excuse to buy more of these gaming products because I enjoy gaming, but the rules have to stay out of my way. And luckily, I really like what I've seen of 10th edition so far and I'm looking forward to finding out more. Thanks for watching.